Welcome to the State Route 37 Virtual Scoping Open House. Thank you for joining us as we present this meeting in a virtual format. Several agencies have partnered on this important project, including Caltrans District 4, the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, Sonoma County Transportation Authority, Solano Transportation Authority, the Napa Valley Transportation Authority, and the consultants working under the direction of these agencies. Towards the end of this presentation, we'll describe in more detail how you can obtain updates and information on the project and the corridor through the State Route 37 website. This includes how to contact the project team, view or request information, and submit comments. This presentation will also be available on the project website following this open house. The meeting format today will consist of this slide presentation followed by a question and answer session. During the Q&A session, please use the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. When you click on this icon, a box will open and you can type in a question or comment. Questions will not be answered until the conclusion of the presentation. If you're joining by phone only and unable to type in a question, please call Emily Biro at 510-768-9066 and she will type in the question for you. Again, that's 510-768-9066. We'll provide this phone number again during the Q&A session. Please note the questions or comments submitted during this webinar are not considered official scoping comments. Official comments must be submitted in writing by mail or email. We'll provide more information on that later in the presentation. This meeting will cover a number of topics as listed on this slide. The background of the corridor and transportation planning, causes of congestion on State Route 37, alternatives considered to date, planned environmental studies, and how to comment and be involved. After the presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions on what was presented. The next series of slides focuses on the State Route 37 corridor and transportation planning. The State Route 37 highway extends from US 101, shown on the left side of this map in Marin County, to Vallejo and Solano County, shown on the right side of this map. It was originally a private road and adopted into the state highway system in the 1930s when it was serving increasing North Bay traffic in the Mare Island shipyard located on the Napa River in Vallejo. From Interstate 80 to Sears Point at the State Route 121 intersection, the highway is four lanes or two lanes in each direction, with turning lanes at the major intersections including Lakeville Highway and State Route 121. Between Interstate 80 and Vallejo to Mare Island, the highway is also four lanes, two lanes in each direction. The portion of the route from approximately Sears Point, point at the State Route 121 intersection to just west of the Napa River which is shown in blue on this slide, is two lanes, one lane in each direction. This two lane segment of the highway has a median concrete barrier with openings at some locations to allow for entry from local roads. State Route 37 passes through the important North Bay marshlands of San Pablo Bay. There has been considerable investment in protecting and restoring these marshlands as they are essential wildlife habitat and they provide other ecological benefits. Historically, the North Bay was subject to construction of dikes where salt pond habitat was drained and used for farming. This has changed with the establishment of the San Pablo Bay National Wildlife Refuge, which borders portions of the State Route 37 corridor, as well as the preservation of other land areas. Conservation groups working in partnership with public agencies have financed and carried out major restoration projects, and these projects have created the tidal marsh habitat that one sees alongside State Route 37 that supports essential waterfowl and critical species and provides other ecological benefits. These lands also support recreational opportunities and provide access points to the San Francisco Bay shoreline. A high priority of transportation improvements along the State Route 37 corridor is to avoid and minimize impacts to these resources. State Route 37 also crosses through multiple jurisdictions, Solano, Sonoma, Napa, and Marin counties. Transportation authorities for these counties have worked in partnership for many years on mobility improvements, and this slide summarizes their commitment and objectives to seek financing and strategies for improving mobility and safety along State Route 37. These regional agencies have been conducting meetings through the State Route 37 Policy Committee, which is organized by the Sonoma County Transportation Authority, or SCTA, but the committee represents all of the county transportation authorities. The Policy Committee has quarterly meetings, and you can find information on past and upcoming meetings at the SCTA Highway 37 website listed here on the bottom of this slide. 
There have been a number of previous transportation studies on the State Route 37 corridor. These have included, but are not limited to, some of the more recent examples listed here. The Highway 37 stewardship study in 2013 involved UC Davis and a collaborated effort between stakeholders and analysts to define constraints and opportunities that should be considered for future planning efforts. The Caltrans Transportation Concept Report in 2015 recommended various long-term concepts for improvements to various segments of the corridor between US 101 and I-80. State Route 37 Integrated Traffic Infrastructure and Sea Level Rise Analysis in 2016 looked at various adaptive design options for the segments of the corridor. And finally, a design alternatives analysis was completed in 2019 that helped define near and long-term improvements. The near and long-term solutions that have been identified to date would address traffic congestion, flooding, and sea level rise while minimizing impacts to ecological resources. For example, a long-term vision for State Route 37 was identified as raising the highway between approximately State Route 121 and Mare Island on a series of berms and bridges to provide better habitat and drainage connectivity with the bay and create a highway facility that would be less vulnerable to sea level rise and flooding. This would require considerable investment and is more complex for construction, including having to maintain an existing highway while constructing a new facility on separate alignment. It would require a construction time frame of many years. Near-term concepts have focused on traffic congestion relief by adding one or more lanes and incentives to increase per-vehicle ridership while minimizing reconstruction of the highway to the extent feasible. These improvements would address traffic congestion relief while not precluding consideration or implementation of any of the other long-term corridor improvements or needs. Both near and long-term improvements will require identification of funding sources. Caltrans is also moving forward with an evaluation of the State Route 37 corridor, referred to as Planning and Environmental Linkages, or PEL, P-E-L. This is a federal planning process used during early project development phases to consider corridor and transportation planning on an overall basis. It's a planning process that can help build consensus between various stakeholders and identify constraints, and it is used as a tool that informs the environmental process. The planning and environmental linkages process considers environmental factors, but it is not a substitute for project level environmental review. The next series of slides summarize traffic congestion conditions along the corridor. This figure illustrates the areas and causes of congestion along State Route 37. For orientation, the community of Nevada is on the left side of the figure and Vallejo on the right side. In the eastbound travel direction between approximately Novato to State Route 121 at the Sonoma Raceway area, the bold red line shows substantial traffic congestion that occurs in the eastbound direction due to lane drops or merges near the State Route 121 intersection. During the PM peak period, eastbound traffic backs up past Lakeville Highway. For an eastbound traveler using the corridor, this backup can result in as much as 100 minutes of travel time in comparison to free flow non-peak conditions of 20 minutes. Congested conditions can remain for up to a seven hour period. Once an eastbound driver passes State Route 121, there can remain intermittent slow conditions until you reach Mare Island, where the highway widens to two lanes in each direction, and you drive over the four lane Napa River Bridge into Vallejo and continue towards I-80. In the reverse direction, traveling westbound from Vallejo towards Marin County, a backup occurs in the AM peak period due to the lane drops at Mare Island, just west of the Napa River Bridge. In this area, westbound State Route 37 has two through lanes and one merging lane, a total of three lanes that have to merge into one westbound lane just west of Mare Island. As a result, westbound traffic can back up over the Napa River Bridge. Westbound travel time within this corridor is 20 minutes without congestion and up to 47 minutes during congested conditions. The duration of the westbound peak period can extend over a six hour period. In addition, because there is only one lane in each direction between State Route 121 and Mare Island, there is no passing allowed. Delays or slow traffic flow can occur within the section when cars are backed up behind slow moving trucks or campers. The area of focus on State Route 37 for traffic congestion relief improvement is therefore the two-lane section between Mare Island and State Route 121 at Sears Point, shown in blue in this figure. 
To allow for placement of signs and lane restriping, the overall project limits extend east over the Napa River Bridge and west towards Lakeville Highway. This slide shows some example photos along the route where the points of congestion occur. The upper left photo shows the eastbound traffic backup or queue that forms where the eastbound lanes are merging from 2 to 1, again in the eastbound direction. The right side photo is in the Mare Island area looking to the west where the four lane freeway ends and it merges into one lane in each direction in the distance. The bottom photo is a representative picture of the highway between State Route 121 and Mare Island showing one lane in each direction and a concrete median safety barrier. This is the section where no passing is allowed. The traffic and existing highway conditions provide the input to the purpose and need for the project. The purpose and need definition for the project has been preliminarily defined and will be updated, but the basic concepts are summarized very briefly here. The purpose is to improve traffic flow and peak travel times and increase vehicle occupancy on State Route 37 between approximately Mare Island and State Route 121. The need is established by the congestion problems that occur on this corridor. These are the areas where the corridor experiences substantial backups and delays in both travel directions. Work done to date for the section between Mare Island and State Route 121 has identified improvements which are summarized in the next series of slides, but this is not an all-inclusive list. One of the reasons for having this scoping review process is to review the conditions on State Route 37 while also gaining input on the range of alternatives. The objectives identified for near-term congestion relief improvements are listed on this slide. These include that new lanes would be for high occupancy vehicles or HOVs during peak travel periods. Work would stay within the existing right-of-way to the extent possible and should minimize environmental impacts considering the sensitivity of resources alongside State Route 37. Improvements should also minimize infrastructure requirements, thereby conserving funding for future improvements that can address other factors such as sea level rise. Finally, an objective is to provide traffic congestion relief as soon as possible. There are a number of local roads and private driveways that connect to State Route 37, and the project will maintain these connections with some possible minor changes. These including maintaining or possibly replacing the median center barrier, and maintaining the existing access to the public viewing and recreational access locations. Some of the alternatives being considered may require closing some of the openings in the median barrier. Alternative one, which is the first of three alternatives that will be presented, is proposed as three lanes with a movable median barrier. It is referred to as a contraflow middle lane because the movable barrier allows the center lane to be reversed in direction. This design allows the limited highway space to be two lanes in the peak direction during the peak traffic period and one lane in the non-peak direction. An existing example of this is the Golden Gate Bridge as pictured here. The barrier would be moved twice daily, corresponding with the changes in peak directional flow in the AM and PM periods. The highway shoulders would be eight feet wide, but slightly narrower at Sonoma Creek Bridge, but accessible to bikes. The movable barrier systems require additional safety measures for the operator and crew, as well as the driving public because the machine operates while traffic is on the highway. There are also ongoing requirements to maintain equipment and staff necessary to operate and maintain the movable barrier system. This is a cross-section diagram of Alternative 1 showing the lane configurations. The center lane is the reversible lane and the movable barrier is transferred to each side of the center lane, allowing the highway to have two lanes in one direction and one lane in the opposite direction. This alternative includes the widened reinforced shoulders with a guardrail on the outside of the highway, which are also components of the other alternatives I'm about to go over. Alternative two is a part-time use lane that uses the outside shoulders. Similar to alternative one, it would result in two lanes available in the peak period, peak direction, and one lane in the opposite non-peak direction. The anticipated shoulders would be four feet wide, which is a little narrower than what exists now. Because of the narrower shoulders, the potential for a bike shuttle is being investigated. And this is a cross-section view of Alternative 2. The top view shows the AM peak period with two lanes in the westbound direction and one lane eastbound. The bottom view shows the PM peak period with two lanes in the eastbound direction and one lane westbound. During the non-peak periods, the highway would be one lane in each direction. This design uses the shoulders to gain space for the additional lane, which would be an HOV lane. 
Alternative three is a full-time four-lane facility, two lanes in each direction. The two lanes in each direction would be open at all times. This alternative has the same roadway design and configuration as alternative two with respect to widening. This would include the four foot wide shoulders, except at the Sonoma Creek Bridge, and a bike shuttle is being considered. This slide shows the cross section of alternative three. As just noted, this would accommodate two lanes in each direction at all times, with the additional lane in each direction being an HOV lane during the peak travel periods. This roadway configuration looks very similar to alternative two, but the difference is that all four lanes would be available during peak and non-peak periods. In summary, there are some common characteristics of all three of the build alternatives. The new lane or lanes would be for HOV use during the peak travel or commute periods. There will be new overhead and roadside signs. Lighting will be added to the corridor to meet safety standards such as at intersections where visibility of oncoming traffic is important. Roadside pullouts would be available at periodic locations for alternative two and three since the shoulders are a little narrower for these alternatives. There will be an HOV transition lane where the HOV lanes begin to allow for cars to adequately merge without causing congestion. The Tolle Creek Bridge will be widened for all three build alternatives and the intersection at Skaggs Road may be restricted to right in, right out. In other words, no left turns through cross traffic. The project will be considering tolling infrastructure in the design, such as power, hardware, or toll reading equipment. However, separate legislation and approvals are needed for any new tolling facilities. Tolling would generate funding for near and long-term improvements on State Route 37. We have begun environmental studies on the corridor and these studies provide essential input into the design ideas and the evaluation of alternatives. This lists examples of the environmental technical studies, but it is not an all-inclusive list. These include biological resources, specifically wetlands, endangered species habitat, and fisheries. Cultural resources includes the evaluation of archeological and historic features. The community impact assessment will cover land use, including looking at protecting impacts on the nearby wildlife refuge and restoration lands, and an evaluation of environmental justice communities. Traffic studies are underway, as is an assessment of sea level rise risk to the corridor. The noise analysis involves ambient noise measurements and assessment of noise levels at existing and future conditions with and without the alternatives in place. The air quality assessment evaluates the potential for increases in criteria pollutants, as well as greenhouse gas emissions. Again, comparing the build alternatives to the existing and no build conditions. When the environmental technical studies are complete, the results will be summarized in a combined environmental impact report, environmental assessment, prepared in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and the National Environmental Policy Act. Caltrans is the lead agency for the environmental document, working in cooperation with regional and local agencies, which were listed on the first slide of this presentation. The project will require regulatory permits and authorizations from various federal and state agencies. And the environmental document will involve public review, including the scoping process, which we are in right now, and later a review period when the EIR EA is released and circulated. This is our project schedule, where we are in the environmental scoping process right now. The public draft EIR EA is anticipated in the summer of 2021 and if the project is advanced for approval, that would be about spring of 2022. Contingent on funding, construction would be in the years 2023 to 2024, and the project may open to traffic in 2025. The schedule is, of course, contingent on project approval and the availability of funds. That's the end of the formal presentation. How can you be informed of what is happening on the corridor? The next slide provides more information. To provide comments during the scoping process, please submit them in writing by either postal mail or email using the information listed here. This information is also available on the project website, and we'll provide it again during the question and answer session. Please note that comments must be received by 5 p.m. on August 24, 2020. Thank you for joining us for this presentation. We'll now move on to the question and answer session.